Welcome to Grand Rapids Community College Biodiversity Boutique. Today we're at the John Ball Zoo and we're going to see a bit of construction. You can probably hear it in the background. You can hear the Canada geese flying overhead. Uh, so we really do have a zoo experience here for you and we hope you really like it. Okay, you guys, this is going to be the uh, new first exhibit at the zoo. And in June, they're going to get Mighty Mike, who's a huge alligator. He's over 13 feet long and he weighs over 800 pounds. So let's think about that, 800 pounds. The average student here weighs maybe 75. 75. So how many students would that be? A couple. <laughs> a couple. Maybe, maybe over 12 students, if we have some small ones. So that's gonna be right here where the flamingos used to be, and that's a new exhibit. And that should be kind of an eye stopper because do you know how big a 13 foot alligator will really look like? Big. It's like a dinosaur. It's big. And, and the mouth, it wouldn't eat you guys like popcorn, but it'd be really close. Really close. Some of you. Right? So that is a big animal. And you can see the workers over here, they're obviously setting up a screen. The animal won't arrive till June. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to have on the other side. It might be birds, so maybe the alligator will always be looking at that side of the tank there, looking at the birds. But uh, this is how they do new exhibits. And I, I did want to point out, you see that walkway over there where all the students are? That makes the zoo a more intimate, um, kind of like an expedition, so you can actually walk into a, an exhibit. So as we study these exhibits, think about what you could do or what they might do to improve the behavior of the animals and your experience of actually being at the zoo and watching them. Did that just happen? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Did you bring your camera? Well, it's not uh, right around the corner. Well, I don't know. He's gonna like What's it say on the sign? Bald eagles. Bald eagles. So do, are they really bald? No. Why, why do they call them bald they then? A, they have a white head. Oh, they have a white head. Okay, so uh, in Michigan, you know, years ago, they were really endangered and rare and threatened. And um, I never saw one when I was growing up. And now... Has anybody seen bald eagles like on the north side of the river there? There's a lot of nesting pairs here in Muskegon. Uh, so they've kind of taken them off the list a bit. And the chemicals we use to, you know, for pesticides, that sort of thing, aren't used anymore. So they've made a, a really a good recovery. They're, they're really not that rare anymore. So have you, you guys have all seen one, right? Outside of the zoo, pretty much. In the wintertime, sometimes you can find six or six to eight different bald eagles up the river there in the Grand River. But I wanted you to notice something. You see all these flowers here? Anybody? These are buttercups. And these are native, and they try to keep everything native here. Normally the water is running through the waterway here. It's not running today, and I don't know why. But uh, normally it adds to the Michigan em environment, and we're, we're thinking of trying to make this a waterway park so that we have water running through the entire park from way up by the expressway all the way down here and then down below even to the alligators. Uh, so we're trying to stress natural environments, right? So if you guys have backyards at home, you can always take up the grass, right? And you can plant buttercups and you can plant golden rods and you can plant asters and you can have a really cool wildlife backyard instead of just grass. Because who wants grass anymore? You guys have to cut it, don't you, sooner or later, Grace? Was it 
Well, that's kind of constructed. I don't know actually how long that one's been there. So in the wild, they would, and they, they weigh, a, a, you know, sometimes a couple hundred pounds. They get really, really big. And uh, they last for years, so they come back to the same nesting sites. I know one north of Muskegon that's been used probably for at least 20 years, and probably by the same birds. So they come back and use that same nest. So, for life, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Right, right. I've seen them at the University of Michigan Biological Station, the young eagles. They, they grab their claws in midair sometimes and they kind of tumble around. It looks like they're going to crash into the ground, but they don't. And then they break off at the bottom. It's just like a game that they play. And I, I think sometimes the young males and females do that too. But uh, when you see that, it's just really an amazing thing. And it makes you think that here in Grand Rapids, you know, we can do exactly the same thing throughout the city just by emulating what we have here at the zoo. So yeah, these are all buttercups, and they're beautiful flowers, and butterflies like them a little bit, and they don't last very long, early spring flowers. So we're gonna go up the ramp here now to the Monkey Island. Have you guys seen the Monkey Island recently? Yeah. Okay, well come on, we're gonna go up there. We'll use the ramp. Okay, we're at the gift shop area and the small restaurant here at the zoo, and I just wanted to point out how valuable it is to create an area where people can gather. So over to my right over here, we have a new uh, area with picnic tables that are really heavy duty and can't blow over in the wind. And then just to the right of that is our new Monkey Island. It's been completely changed. Uh, and it's, it's really beautiful. We'll actually get up there and see that. But you can see when you get to the zoo, you can see a, like a panorama of things in front of you. So there's domestic flowers, there's waterfalls, you know, there's pathways that give you nice vistas. And this is all planned by people who may or may not be zoologists, you know, because we need architects here, we need planners, we need business people. Everybody comes together at the zoo to make a really nice experience for all the students. Even this right here that you're walking on, when I, when I saw this, uh, I think it was a year ago, I thought this will never get done in time for spring. They did it in one night. So all the fossil-like, leaf-like patterns over there and this right here was all done very, very quickly because they had to open and they had to have this ready. So we're gonna continue. We're gonna walk over to the Monkey Island now and we're gonna go up to the uh, chimpanzee exhibit and the lion exhibit first and then we'll walk our way down, okay? We're at the new Monkey Island. Who remembers what the old one used to look like? It was kind of sad, wasn't it? Yeah. So we had architects come in here and zoo planners, and they put this barrier around here, but you can, actually, you can actually see the monkeys better, and all these little rounded areas, you can actually walk out there and get closer to the exhibit. And if you look at the water, it doesn't leak anymore. So we used to have a terrible problem with leakage, and now it looks beautiful, doesn't it? The waterfalls over there, people can eat right above, so you get another view up there. And these rocks, you guys, do they look like regular rocks? Those are actually painted. So there were artists out here painting the rocks because they knew what rocks looked like. And throughout the zoo, you're gonna see that. Uh, we, have, we hire a lot of people from other companies that come in here to design the zoo. You gotta have people who know about plumbing, you gotta have people who know about artwork and people who know about architecture. And then you have to have people who know about animals and what looks natural. These guys are very, very natural over here. They have a really good time every day. I wish I had their life. Somebody feeds me every day. You got a nice place to rest at night. Lots of play areas, you know, you can watch people. They do a lot of people watching here. And then of course you have ducks that come in and want to kind of take over, you know? No, actually they, they won't go near the water, or they won't actually go into it. I've never seen them do that. Now in the wild, uh, I think they, sometimes they do that, but not here. Maybe it's too cold. Yeah, it might be too cold. In the tropics, it's quite different. But see, they're pretty good climbers. Isn't that great? And the great tail there, the prehensile tail, it can grab onto things. So it's, like a, it's like a fifth leg, really. So those are our relatives, you know? They, they groom each other. 
You know, they get in fights once in a while. They give each other hugs. All the things that all the other primates do, they do. Now, if you look in the distance over here, you can see uh, the little, the actual native hut there from uh, Africa of the lion exhibit. And over here is a chimpanzee. So again, you can see how that trail leads up there. We're gonna go up that trail and see the lion exhibit and see the chimpanzee exhibit. We'll probably do the chimpanzee exhibit first. And then you guys can tell me what you think of that exhibit, okay? Because I think it's pretty special. So follow me. I want to point out one more thing, everybody. If you, if you look over here, your view of the monkeys is different than over there, right? And you get a whole different perspective. And do they look pretty natural? You think they, yeah. they look pretty happy, don't they? You got to have toys for primates or they're not very happy. They're just like us. See, apparently, <laughs> we used to have the biggest colony, I think, in the country. And I forgot exactly what they did with it, but um, it was really huge. This, uh, the, the monkey colony here was really, really big. And then I like it up there, too, because you can look down. You can, you can eat up there. So things are much better than they used to be. It's much more viable. And our attendance, as I was telling you, is up, it's almost doubled. So it's really huge. I bring all my students here from Grand Rapids Community College. The zoology students, I bring them here every, every semester. So we're gonna walk up here to the chimpanzee exhibit now. Oops, sorry, Julie. Didn't now this is a uh, part of the zoo that I'm really proud of personally, the Peter and Pat Cook Mocomboso Valley exhibit of the uh, chimpanzees. This took a long time to put in, and when you see it again, if you haven't seen it in a while, it's really, really beautiful. And down right at your feet are bricks with names engraved in them, and you can contribute money if you want. I mean, e even as schools in Grand Rapids, you can contribute money to have your school name or individual names on the bricks. You can donate to the zoo that way because we're always looking for don donations, right? It's, it's a hard economic time and pennies, nickels, they all add up. So this is just one way of thanking the people who have given money here, but we have a lot of bricks and we're willing to tear them up, I think, to put more bricks in for uh, money. So this, I think, is a world-class type exhibits here, this one in the lion exhibit. And one day, all the exhibits will be like that. So we're gonna go over here to the chimpanzees. You'll notice that there are at least three different viewing points, all of which are different. And then there's a house for the, the chimpanzees in the wintertime where they spend the winter. And you'll see that they're all set up with little hammocks and places where they can make a nest for the night, that sort of thing. So it's really a favorite part of the zoo for everybody. So come on up the path here. You, you can see here <clears throat> that some of the chimpanzees are inside today. I don't know what the reason is that they're actually inside, but some of them are taking a nap. Uh, they're, they're on their little nest there, and there's several others that are outside. We also have medical care for the chimpanzees over here on this wall, beyond this wall. So they get checked uh, uh, you know, periodically, and, and, and one has diabetes, so that uh, chimpanzee actually gets shots. So they give them a little you know, award, and she gets her shot, and then she's okay for the day. But you can see again how important it is for primates like the chimpanzees to have toys to play with. They're just like us. They, they need constant invigoration. They need to be working with things. And are there any students here who don't like to do that? Do you like just to sit still and stare off into space? No. You guys like pencils and papers and, you know, you make things. Yeah, things that you throw, absolutely. So we have a lot of that, but look around here. You can see all the educational material for you along the walls. It takes a person who knows about that kind of stuff to display it properly so you don't get overwhelmed. Like right here is a small, dis no, you're good. It's a small display, and over there's another, and over here's another. They're spaced apart, so they gotta figure all this out. And then notice to your left over here, there is a viewing window. This view is different than the other views, of course. And there's one standing up, he's kind of bipedal right now. 
And if you look at the walls over there, those walls are all created by artists. And if you look at them carefully, you'll see that they kind of lean in. And that's to prevent them from actually climbing out. So they put food, they might put um, special treats and little holes, like there's one over there where that one is. And they'll put a stick in there and pull it out and they'll spend hours doing that. Uh, they play, they put drums out there to play with. But I think this is a really great exhibit because as you look at the wall, it looks like you're looking out kind of like infinity of a, you know, a, a forest or something. And that makes it to me very, very natural. So even though you see the wall, the wall disappears from your mind because you see the background of trees and everything. I think you might have missed them. <laughs> now, you see what he's doing there? That's called knuckle walking. And uh, the ancestors that we shared, you know, common descent with, they're arguing right now whether they were knuckle walk walkers or not, and whether or not knuckle walking in this group that leads to gorillas and chimpanzees was, uh, was different than the group that led to ourselves. So we don't do that, although you can do that if you want. Your last third and fourth digit parts of your digits, you can actually do that. It hurts because they have pads on those parts of their fingers to, you know, take the abuse. Oh, uh, yeah, he's sleeping there for the afternoon, I guess. It's a siesta time, you know. Everybody should take a siesta. Yes, they should. What are the ages of these guys now? I honestly don't, don't know. Really know. I don't really know. I mean, I, can you tell by looking at the color of their hair that they're yeah, just getting older? Yeah, right? just, like, just us. like us. A little gray hair and the temporal bones there. And this guy down here. Yeah. That's the thinker. We'll call that one. The, the thinker, thinker, yeah. Rodan would be proud. <laughs> Isn't that fun? How they're looking at you? <laughs> See, they always have to do something different, you know? Yeah. Now, he probably doesn't know why he's doing that, but uh, it's just something to do, right? Got a big rise. <laughs> so you're being a good mom today. It comes natural. <laughs> is it different? Panoramic. It's like a panoramic view, isn't it? And, and it like they're in the one's inside kind of looks bored. Bored a little bit or sleepy or yeah, well, lethargic. Mom was yeah, he was running his bucket into the wall. And over here, maybe a little chilly today for him, I don't know exactly, but there's a couple out. And they spend a lot of time up there in that walkway, and also a lot of time at one of the views that we'll go up to later on. But you notice how they created the rocks here? The paint and everything, and the, the staggering stuff? It looks kind of like if you're going down to Florida, down to, you know, through Tennessee, you'll see the rocks are angled like that. They're pushed up by the action of the volcanic activity in Earth, and they're all layered, but they're not layered completely flat. Now, these guys can hang just by a couple fingers. They're very strong. Yeah, they can, like, break their arms. Right. Yeah, they can break their arms. Yeah, the, the bonobos, uh, which are their cousins, aren't, aren't quite so uh, crazy like that, if you want to. But these guys are all right, you know? Yeah. Look at the muscles in her arm down there. That, she is really muscular. Could probably lift you guys up pretty easily, don't you think? Yeah, they can. Yeah. Did the, that one do that? Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Bird. 
<laughs> They're really fast. Look at her. Oh, okay. Do you guys think you could outrun one of these chimps? No. 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 Probably not. Chimps? Yeah. 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 Y
And then they have visitors making chimpanzee sounds. <laughs> Hi, I am here. Hi, I am a chimpanzee. We want to meet with you. Talking about the way they set up the zoo, again, a totally different view. It looks like you're looking down a cliff over here. And there's a big rise over there, and you can see like there's a valley next to that wall that you couldn't see before. In the afternoon on hot days, they all come up here and they sit. Has anybody ever seen them sitting up here together? Yeah. So they'll lie here on the rocks, and sometimes they put this uh, sugary solution in one of the rocks over here so they eat it all day long. Yeah, what is going on? What's really sad is they're still endangered, you know, in the wild. And even though they've discovered huge population of um, lowland gorillas, I think it was like, yeah, a huge population. Yeah, uh, it was in Central Africa somewhere. I've forgotten exactly where it is. But there were thousands of them, which is always good news. It's good and thing. I mean, it's a good thing, yeah. but it's like... As soon as it's known, because the, the signage over here talks about the bushmeat trade, you know, and the terrible things that they do. Tool. Now, do you think that he regards that as a tool? Yeah. Absolutely. Or a toy. Now, see? He's going to use it, though. He's using it, so it would be a toothbrush. Toothbrush. Yeah, that is a tool. It would be a tool. So, you know, sometimes people feel bad because they're in sort of a cage like area, but if they're in an area like this, they live really pretty natural lives. And so this is one way for everyone to enjoy them. I mean, most people can't go to Africa to see them. This is one way to make you aware of the importance of saving wildlife throughout the world and habitat. That's the most important part. Yeah, it's habitat destruction that's the worst of all, everyone. Yeah. So we have signage over here for habitat destruction, why we shouldn't do that. And... It's really pretty sad. But things are getting better, I think. People are more aware throughout the world, part of our global economy. So we have to keep that up. Right. Right. And, and that's one reason why Costa Rica does so well, is because they have this huge infrastructure for tourism. And so they have saved so much of their land. Slash Instead of slash and burn, they have all these uh, parks there. It's amazing. That little country has so much. <laughs> There's no what are these animals called? Lions. Lions. They look pretty sleepy to me. They're lazy lions. Is this because they're lying down? Is that it? That was a bad pun. <laughs> Do you see the water again, though? The little creek? And you know, some of these, uh, these big stumps over here are, are heated so that in, later in the year they, can, they lie on those trunks there and on the branches and they stay warm. But uh, this exhibit was financed a lot by the Bissell uh, group and, and they contributed quite a bit of money to make this. These exhibits are very expensive, but they are also our best exhibits. So this kind of reminds you of the chimpanzee exhibit in a way, doesn't it? The water theme runs through it. The walls are somewhat similar, but they have extra high walls. You guys see the walls there on the side? They are huge and then they come in. It's kind of like, you know, they don't want them climbing up and over because then they would be in the west side of Grand Rapids, right? That Which would not be good. It would not be good. For the lions or for us. So do you guys like this exhibit too? Yeah. Anybody want to go down there? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, we'll take a walk down there by the river and okay. look for gold or something. Maybe there's gold down there. You never know. Okay, well, we're going to go down the stairs now. We're going to go to another viewing area of the same exhibit, and you'll see it's totally different. This would be like if you climbed a tree in Africa, and you're looking down at the lions, and now we're going to go down at the ground level and see what they're doing down there. And maybe they'll attack us through the glass. I they'll hope. They'll attack us through the glass. I, I don't think they will, but you never know. They don't have to you're attacking. Okay, I'm checking the time. Yeah. It's like 25 to. We have to be out by 2. You here, and they got slanted glass here that gives you a different perspective. And I noticed everybody climbed on the rock right away. Isn't that kind of strange? This is what we do, right? Just like primates would do the same thing. They climb on a rock just to kind of check things out. And now you can see the pass that they have here. And the, the major tree, artificial tree over there with the uh, heating elements that go through it. So it's quite different now, right? This would be what it would be looking like if you were on the belt or something in Africa and, and looking around and all of a sudden you see a lion. What would you guys do? Say, look, a lion. You'd say, look, a lion, that's it? Mm -hmm. Or would you say, you wouldn't say, oh my gosh, a lion, I should leave? Yeah. Slowly? That's what I would do. I would leave slowly. Why wouldn't you climb a tree with these guys? Because they, they can climb a tree. <laughs> exactly, that would probably be a mistake. <laughs> now, if you look around, you'll see all sorts of information about the cultures of Africa, where these lions came from, and hunting habits of the, the native Africans there. Huge diversity in cultures and in dress and styles, beautiful clothes, and I don't know, I just think it's really fascinating. Lots of different languages. So if you go to Kenya and Tanzania, you will see many, many different groups of people. Uh, Swahili is the language of choice right now, but there's other languages, many tribal languages. I've known international students who come from that area, and they speak three or four languages. They might speak two tribal languages, Swahili, French, and maybe even English. So, you know, compared to us, what do we speak? English, <laughs> right? And if they don't speak English, it's like, oh, well, too bad. But it's always good to know another language. And Swahili, in, and at least in um, East Africa, is probably the best one to know. It's probably the universal language there. So I love the posters here. I love the signage, and I love the pictures. And over here, when we walk over here, you'll see more. So they, they spread it out so that they have what they call kind of like crowd control. Not everyone's in a little knot around one little spot. And there's textiles here. There's um, other crafts that they make. Oh, you're going to open those up? I you're just not strong enough. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how that thing works. Do you have to put money in to do that? You might have to, no? You sure? Okay, who wants to, who wants to try this? Who wants to try to close this? Okay, we're almost going to do it. Okay, let's see if you guys can do it. Close the jaws. That gives you the force. No, it actually reads it out right here. You've got 2,000 pounds of force. That's pretty good. I guess that's all it is, it measures that. It doesn't really close the jaw. Okay, anybody else want to try it? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So far, we got to be 2,100. Does anybody know what this animal is right over here? It's a warthog. And what's the name of the warthog? Warthog. No. Warthog. No. What's the name of the warthog? What's the name? Pumba. Pumba. Oh yeah, Pumba. Well, it's not really Pumba, is it? It's whatever you want to call it. 
They are very pretty mammal, don't you think? Yeah. Unique. Very unique. Yeah, the comb over is really in with that. So are the tusk. <laughs> They're very attractive. They probably think we are too. Right. Now we're gonna we're gonna take the high road over here to the South American exhibit, and we're gonna see where the new monarch exhibit is gonna go in the monarch butterfly, and also we're gonna look at some of the camels of South America. So I'll explain some of that to you. They might be putting some birds that used to be down the front up over here, but I'm not sure when. And they're gonna revamp all these exhibits up here too. So it's really an exciting time to be at the zoo. So follow me, you guys. And the water's so clean now after winter. You see the duck right on the top? The female, the male's over here. Isn't that funny? <laughs> there he goes. He's happy now. They never leave. They never leave the female alone. They, they follow them all around in the spring. Yeah, I know. She'll have to fly down. Why is she up there? I don't know. She just had guanacos, vicuña. And and Yama. We say Lama, but it's it's a double L, so it's Yama. Uh, no, that was our uh, um, capybara. Yep. Yeah. Rodents of unusual size. Rodents. Those are the biggest rodent on the planet. And they have like tons of photos, of, like things, like videos on YouTube. And like one is where it yeah. like sits for a popsicle, and then she eats right. it. Right. A lot of people in South America eat those, so they're they're not that rare. I know. Well, you guys have hamburgers sometimes, don't you? Maybe. Not anymore. <laughs> right. Oh, that sun. Yeah, the vegetarian group. That's good. The vegetarian is good. Now, there used to be a lot of camels in uh, North America, too, but they're all extinct now. But there were four or five species. Some of them were huge. And you can see they shed and they look kind of messy, but that wool, the, the fur, is really, really fine and very soft and very warm. So if you go to South America, you can, you can buy vicuña or yama or apaca. Um, some of it's restricted, but it's very soft and it lasts forever. Hey, Dr. Matt. Dr. Matt. Yes. There's guanaco. 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 Of America's notice some of the pictures and information yeah. along the middle. Uh, Akasha, Olmec, right there. Perfect word for them, disheveled. You know, they're shedding and um, they're not particularly friendly, but they're really kind of a cool animal. I'm going to go see the Kobe Bars. And you got to like their face, you know? Where's our capybara? Did he take off? Oh, there's one little one over here. He's a giant. Yeah, really. A bad rug. <laughs> well, come on down here, everybody. This exhibit is going to change. Uh, at the end of May, we're going to open up a monarch butterfly exhibit here. And right here, where you guys are looking into, there's going to be live monarch butterflies flying around in a little, uh, oh, like a mini uh, monarch house. And over here, there's going to be exhibits that you can do. And there will be completely different signage over here. So it's going to be a very exciting opening here pretty soon. And we're going to have releases here in the fall. Late summer in the fall, we're going to let monarch butterflies go. We'll tag them first and we'll see how far they get. They're recovered in Mexico and then they send you the tag back 
and they say, congratulations, your butterfly made it all the way to Mexico. Now last, this past winter, they lost over 50% of all the monarchs. They lost hundreds of millions of monarchs because of the really cold weather and the freezing rain down there. So every once in a while, they get really hit badly. And this was one of those winters where many of them died off. So I'm really curious as a monarch person to see how many will actually make it back up here. So if any of you see a monarch flying up here in May, you got to let me know. You got to call me up and say, I saw a monarch, OK? Big orange butterfly, you can't miss it. So we'll have this over here. And hopefully, students will really like it. You know, they can watch the monarchs. They'll see the life history. And they'll have microscopes up here where you can see butterfly wings, that sort of thing. It'll be a lot of fun. Now, right over here, Wilma was pointing out the Aztec and the Maya, and there's Olmecs. There's a huge number of Native American uh, cultures and groups down in Mexico, which is technically still part of North America. And all these pyramids that were built here resemble, in a way, some of the pyramids you might see in Egypt, but they're constructed differently. So if you ever have a chance to travel, you really got to see these and climb these. And there's places uh, that you can actually go inside the pyramids. And they're really kind of scary. If you're claustrophobic, you shouldn't go in there because they, they're, they're very small because these people were smaller. And you have to duck down and the walls are like, like this and it's hot in there. So it's not a place that I actually go into because I'm kind of claustrophobic. I don't like that. But a lot of people do, and you get up to the top of the pyramid or wherever and uh, look out. You see the sacrificial altars. Um, Palenque is really beautiful, but Chichen Itza is beautiful too. And when you think that we had all these advanced cultures here, it's really kind of amazing. And they're all gone now. Some of their, their, the people still remain and some of their language does, but the rest is gone. So this is kind of interesting because we're going to be in Mexico, right? And in South America, we're releasing the butterflies here. And hopefully they'll get to Mexico. See how they hang from the trees all on each other? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to have a video from uh, the college over here that shows a continuous loop of them in the trees. And then there's a new nature program. Is it not Life on Earth? What is it? Life. Life. That's where I see it. And you saw that? And they, yeah. Yeah. We're, well, they had those cameras on pulleys. It was really kind of cool because they're really, you know, high-speed cameras, and they got the flight of the monarchs really yes. in focus. So they said that they were nervous because once they leave a tree and they're done, they didn't want to set up all their rigging. Right. So they were like really yep. careful. But I see now they do with counterweights. Yeah, counterweights and really multiple pulleys, so the camera just kind of rides along yes. smoothly. Amazing. You didn't see. I got recorded record it on. They, they, you have to wait for just when the sun's out warm enough and the temperature's warm enough, and they start to fly. Yeah. And then you let that camera roll. And it doesn't matter because there's so many millions. Oh, man, when they take off, I, I've been down there, and it's very interesting. You have to cross a number of areas to get to this one spot. It's not the, the big touristy spot, yeah. uh, but it's um, an area where you can go in small groups, and you're, you're kind of like in a wilderness, and they're just hanging by the hundreds of millions. Looks it's just you unbelievable. Just you, you can't help but step on There's so many of them. They're just everywhere. Yeah. Yep. If it gets cold, they're, they're out of luck. Yeah. That must have been amazing. But you can hear when they're flying in the daytime, they make a sound. It's like a whooshing sound all around you. Oh, there's so many. And like I said, they're all over the ground. They're everywhere. You can't help but step on them. They're just, oh, they're fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to head down here, everybody. This. This is an older exhibit, everybody, but I really like it, actually. And I don't see the otter here today, but I do know we're getting another one. Oh, yeah. And can you see him, Julie? Right there. Right over here. Here. Right, right over here. See him? Sleeping. That's what they do best. I really like it when they swim because they're so sleek. And when they dive in the water, they, they hardly make a splash. There he goes. Hey, how you doing? Oh, jeez. <laughs> it kind of looks like my zoology students after a bad lecture. 
you know? Heads on the table. <laughs> I could live here. It's got everything I need. Water, shade, waterfall, people looking at me, right? So anyway, um, this is going to conclude our visit to the zoo today. So I, I just want to thank the Stepping Stones Montessori moms and students again today. And we'll do this again when we have all the exhibits open, I think, probably later in August, September. But again, if, you have, if you've taken any notes, remember, you can always tell me what you think. Maybe you want to design exhibits when you grow up. I think that would be super. So I want to thank everybody for coming to Biodiversity Boutiques again. And we'll see you again next time.